At long last, I'm back at the microphone with Michael in Germany. Today, we are going to approach the 29th session of the series on conspiracies, specifically a biblical approach from Michael and a lot of Michael's research that happens to just coincide and dovetail perfectly into the research that I have done as well. Michael, welcome. Yeah, welcome, Brett, and hello, dear listeners. I'm once again stuck with the old Kennedy thing. <laughs> and uh, that also, that creates uh, much, much, much response in Germany also. So that is a thing that actually was a little bit wondering because since we got into the ritual of Kennedy, oh, there are about 50% more, more viewers. Uh, than usual. So I hope that I can continue with some interesting facts. I know that the real substantial things will soon follow in the next sessions, but uh, we have to do it step by step, I think. So this is Kennedy the Ritual Part 4. You see here the steps of Freemasonry. On the left you see the Scottish Rite, and on the right you see the, the York Rite. Usually it has been depicted or understood or been taught that the York Rite is some kind of American way of Freemasonry. Actually, the Freemasonry, of course, the official uh, explanation is from 1717, has of course been part of the so-called French Revolution, which was staged by the Jesuits. So therefore the official Jesuits um, or the unofficial Jesuits, the Jesuits in disguise, because uh, at the time of the French Revolution, they were forbidden, they were expelled from the Pope. And so, therefore, Freemasonry took over for the official state doctrine of the French Republic and, of course, for the founding fathers of the United States of America. You see here the pyramid uh, with uh, the top stone missing on that uh, instance here, because uh, that is just uh, reserved for the one in place for the spirit which is guiding the people, which is, of course, Lucifer dash Satan. Actually, it is Satan now, because Lucifer, the title of his profession is not available anymore because he has been thrown out of heaven. So, therefore, the Uncomplete God is always depicted with one eye. Symbolism, that's the same symbolism on the back side of your dollar note. And on the right side, you see here the York Rite, which has only 10, I think it was uh, 10 steps unto the very top. I will enlarge it a bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see that is here the, uh, the 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. And even by 33, the top stone is still missing. So there are much more levels than we shall expect, and there is much more to it. But what there is to it is that this Freemasonry thing is actually ruling secretly the United States. And of course, the people behind the Freemasons are, of course, the people who are then have officially been founded the United States, which is, of course, so to speak, the descendants of the Holy Roman Empire. So by the no. name... Hmm? Yes, Michael, that is a one big load to take in for someone that might be from the United States and unfamiliar with the, what can we say, the, the rules of Freemasonry and also the uh, creation of the United States so-called Republic, which is really interesting because that's an oxymoron you just stated. Uh, the the uh, the actual founding fathers uh, calling themselves Christian because in the Bible it says, call no man your father, mm. which is who is in heaven. You know, this is Matthew, the book of Matthew. And, uh, you know, why why is it that uh, that everyone just regurgitates the same thing over and over I think it serves a purpose, and that is a, a kind of indoctrination. And, you know, these these principles of uh, Freemasonry are, you know, they're they're age old. And obviously, just did you as you had explained, Michael, that uh, the Jesuits had to create a veil in which to hide their Jesuitism. And I think that this fits very well, as you explain with the methods of uh, Jesuitism, but in a different guise, so to speak, in a different uh, form. And it's in it's such a form that you can actually 
use it and accompany it along with the church. But, you know, in in um, standard, uh, what can we say, in lay terms, uh, Freemasonry is not considered a religion, but in reality it is. So there's a lot of oxymoron going on, and it's very confusing to those that haven't been, quote-unquote, initiated. But the true initiation we believe uh, is the brethren in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, which is the study of scripture, not of Freemasonry. Freemasonry is just another usurpation like the papacy. It's just a, a way of taking over the doctrine and using it for, uh, for what can we say? The ends justify the means, Michael? Yeah, I got no problem with the explanations. What I got a problem is that the people actually don't want to see the truth. And the truth is that the clerical people always are in control. They were never out of control. They just hide or hid themselves uh, behind closed doors, uh, behind secret organizations, secret orders, etc. So it's 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 absolutely the same i can uh, i'm not here to make any claims or even not to make any false claims i'm here to point the finger to the things which i do now because you see that if that is not a temple here uh, with the columns here with an yeah. entrance like a womb and Art. with priests then i don't know what that is yeah that has nothing to do with the hierarchy of uh, busy people and uh, businessmen and so you see all the things here you see kings you see um, oh, knights, yeah. you see swords yeah that's of course that, yeah and, you and know, now you please compare that with the scottish right yeah, yeah michael i was gonna say you know the the differences between scottish and york right you had just briefly mentioned that you know Perhaps, you know, we in America think we're York right. Well, isn't it more we're Scottish right? And in Europe, it's York right. Isn't that the case? Yeah, but actually, there is no difference. Yeah, because there is no it's, difference. It's, okay. it's just divide at impara, just divide and conquer once again. So that the one hand can say that, oh, no, 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 we don't belong here. And the others can say, no, are we on? I, I got another little, little nugget, too. You know, the double headed eagle? Mm -hmm. And you have a double-headed phoenix as well. And I know that I had made a video a long time ago, most popular video on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, I had some comments some years ago from someone who uploaded that video onto another channel. And they were absolutely livid about, you know, that uh, I used the text from, actually, Alan Lamont used the text from uh, Eric John Phelps's work on the double-headed eagle, and I put a picture of a double-headed phoenix up there and mm -hmm. called it a double-headed eagle, and they were all livid about it. And I didn't really understand that until I looked into the phoenix, and then I understand that the phoenix comes from Phoenicia, and the Phoenicians were involved in all kinds of ritualistic what can we say uh alexandrian type uh uh worship and you know it has nothing to do with the bible of course i mean this is the realm of of the man of sin that we're talking about here this is antichrist material we're talking about here and um you know uh i have a really hard time understanding exactly where you know they were coming from until i looked into this and uh yeah it's really kind of confusing for someone just looking at the symbology michael and um and you know what what is it about the phoenix what are they trying to to portray there um is it power is it domination um this uh this kind of idea that you know you have this phoenix rising from the ashes as if you know you have to destroy the whole uh kingdom to create a new one and then you have the the you know that phoenix rising up out of the the destruction of the old you know kingdom or empire or whatever and uh yeah, I don't know. You know, I just I 
try to wrap my brain around that, and it's not always that easy. Actually. I can tell you, Brad, that uh, the Phoenix is also uh, one of the contents in this session, not in this session, but in the series. But I guess it is about uh, session 60. <laughs> okay. Because then you got the clarification uh, what the Phoenix actually is a secret symbol for. And uh, the, the, the problem there is, is uh, I'm not trying to mix anything up, but uh, the Phoenix has also something to do with Freemasonry, and which we, we, we will see in yeah, the content that... that We will see. We will see in the content that I think that the majority of the listeners will not expect when we are going down to the ritual and the killing of Kennedy. Great. Well, we'll just anything, tight then, Mike. anything to do with it? Yes, yes, yes. But it's not in the open. You see, it has been been hidden and it has not been seen in plain view. It has just been hidden so that only a few people actually know about it. And, and you see that is coming back to the thing of the Scott. Scottish Rite versus the York Rite, you see that usually Wikipedia depicts as the York Rite being the one who is being practiced in the United States of America, coming from York, where it is not practiced. You see that York is an old town in old England, the old world, and now you got a new York, well, which is uh, one of the mega cities of the entire world. And so it's a New York Rite or the York Rite the new right, what else to say? Mm -hmm. You see, this is a, just a play of words. But if you if you just then compare that with the York right, yeah, you see the last uh, 10, 11, and 12 degree of it has been called the Order of the Red Cross. What does that have to do with Freemasonry? And the 11th one is the Order of Malta. What has that to do with Freemasonry? And the 12th one is the Order of Knights Templar. What does it have to do with Freemasonry? You see, that's the It's absolutely the same thing if you are being initiated in a Roman Catholic knighthood or knight order, or if you're initiated in a so-called Protestant Freemasonry lodge. So it's the same thing because they are using actually the same the, the, the same symbols and the same names, which means it's absolutely the same. It is, of course, a religious order. You see that it's called the Order of Malta has something to do with... Sorry, I have to cut it down here because I'm... Forgot to close it down because I'm not oh, yeah, bombarded, bombarded with emails otherwise. So once again, you see, they are using terms and symbols. And I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm too loud because I have uh, installed the microphone much more to my, uh, so I have to and have more distance. So sorry for being too loud. Maybe I just forgot to uh, not to go to get too close to the microphone. So these are actually the actually the same thing in as uh, for the Knight Templars. The Knight Templars were coming from Malta and they were bearing a red cross. <laughs> you see, it's absolutely the same. And the Sovereign Order of Malta actually is a state which is now located not in Malta as you would expect, but in the Vatican nowadays. So these are sovereign states, which is actually the resemblance of their name. This is a sovereign state. So this is a religious order which bears a sovereign state. It's the same as the Vatican. It's a religious order having a state, even a state bank. But it's interesting when you look at the sign, sovereign order of Walt Malta, what's missing there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's what missing, I was... you know, as well as I do. Yes. It's the militia. Yeah. They yeah, are a militia as well. Yeah, that's the problem. You see that uh, it's not it's not the wrong information, but it is incomplete information. So actually, they are the sovereign military order of Malta. And guess what? You know, this uh, little pamphlet from the Pope from 1514 is called Regimini Militantis Ecclesi. Ah, something like this. Correct. Yeah. You see, what is missing here is the military. <laughs> so they are not just, they are not diplomats. They're not just speaking and making fancy words. Yeah, this is a military regime. You see, the later one here is the Latin order of the erection and the allowance and the, the things about the Jesuitical order from Ignatius or Ignatius de Loyola, also a nobleman, a Spanish nobleman, by the way. Yeah, you see, what is missing here is the military. And this is the same military as the military of the church. Yeah, this is the military of the church, more or less. So that is the papal bull for the uh, Jesuit order. And this is the complete name of the Surrey military order. Yeah, sorry, I forgot order of Malta. When do you receive an order? When you have a hierarchy. Yeah, so in the military, you have an order. 
Yeah, you have a rank. You have a general, ah, general, oh, general, by the way, the supreme general of the Jesuits. Yeah, so they know that is a military order because their head is not called Pope. Usually, it is just a nickname, the Black Pope of the Jesuits. Ah, but actually, yes. officially, it is the supreme general. Yeah, so it is Obviously a military. Obviously, have order. a Grand Master in the in the yeah. sovereign military order of Malta, which is yes. actually tied right into Freemasonry. Yes. Yeah, you see, this is mixing up. They cannot separate. Yes. Things. Yes. They want to confuse us, that's for sure. They cannot separate the things. So it, it's all a big uh, it's, it's all a big religious order which is controlling, as you can see here, the United Nations. Uh, why am I saying that they are controlling the United Nations? Because uh, this is one uh, continuous member of the uh, uh, United Nations. And uh, on the second oh, they're, hand... They're an overseeing member. How is that called? They have... Uh, they have uh, something called um, oversight. Yeah, this is this is uh, due. This is valid for the Vatican, actually. Yes. So, yes. so both the papacy and the sovereign military order of Malta oversee the United Nations, according to the book that Francis Rooney wrote and Tom Fress read on Inquisition Update in ninety nine parts. And uh, if if our listeners haven't checked that out, they really need to go check that out and listen to Tom's work there because it's uh, it's uh, one in a million, and you're not going to find that information anywhere else. And Very the thing, that, the thing that really uh, makes me makes me weird, uh, this is really make, keeping me busy, is that uh, actually the people absolutely do not know anything about the sovereign military order of Malta, that it is located in the Vatican nowadays. It has nothing to do with Malta. <laughs> it, it That's was right. That it they was, have a 900 year history. They're over yeah. 900 years old. They've, they've yeah. been around for a very, very long time since the Crusades. And yeah. they were the the hospital uh, hospitaller hosp order, yeah. Yeah, hospitaller order. I'm sorry, I butchered that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not used to saying it. Hospitallers, I want to say, but that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that that is actually the problem that people do not want to see that the these politicians are being controlled by so-called clerical orders. That means that there is not only the super military order of Malta, which do, they do have a permanent observer mission. That's uh, as, it. As, permanent as observer status. Mission, yes. mission from the Jesuits. You see, there were said the Jesuits are being uh, depicted with when they are being spread out the the belief in the Jesuitical um church so to speak so they have an observer mission status both the sovereign order of malta as well as the vatican um can you think of another clerical organization around the world who's got an observer status and an, an exactly also a sovereign state in the united nations does buddhism have a sovereign state in the united nations does Islam have a sovereign state in the United Nations, which is absolutely Islam, when you say the exception of Iran, uh, more or less. But there are two so-called, so-called Christian states who have an observer status in the United States. We are oversee, and oversee, you see, is another term for bishop. Mm -hmm. And it's the overseer. And you see that they are missing out here the military from the complete title, uh, I think not by coincidence, yeah, but uh, on purpose. And so I, I want to draw the connections between the Catholic orders and the Freemasonry Lodge. You see that it's all the same uh, from a different coin. You see on the on the one hand, you see officially, you see the Sovereign Order of Malta as a so-called Catholic organization or state, a small, a small, small, tiny, tiny state. And on the other hand, you got uh, Freemasonry, which uh, resembles in the York Rite, for example, the uh, almost the same titles as the Knights themselves, the Order of the Knights Templar. Or the Order of Malta. You see, this is the Order of Malta here, S M O M, and this is the Order of Malta, the eleventh grade of the Freemason York Rite. So where is the difference? <laughs> there is none. They're all serving Satan. It's 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 no difference. So these people, these states, absolutely know what is going on on a political. Uh, theater on the stage around the world. And so these are the people who are controlling the so-called politicians. 
Yes, and everybody who does not obey, like John Fitzgerald Kennedy, you see that uh, will have a similar fate, I, I guess. Huh? So this is just people here who are, of course, here having a title of the Roman Catholic Knighthood Order, uh, because I am bombarded too with all the offers uh, by email, for example. Oh, please become a knight. Yeah, like Paul McCartney, Sean Connery, Kevin Spacey and Elton John. Yeah, sure. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So these are the people who are absolutely have hidden agendas. They are serving not their, not people, but they are serving a higher authority, which is the Roman Catholic Church. And I know that Paul McCartney also is, has been caught and all the Beatles with having a so-called in a Freemasonry pose, being big pictured with the Freemasonry pose with the hidden hand. Yeah, so you can play both sides of the coin as well. You can be a member of Freemasonry and the Catholic Order at the same time, because it's actually the same. It's the same thing. It's the same. Yeah. And uh, in German, I, I pointed out that all the agendas, so be it JFK, be it 9-11, be it the moon landing, be it this and this, be it that, they're all been connected and you have to see that. Yeah. For example, the Sovereign Order of Malta military mission, permanent mission to the UN in New York. And now you see that here in the smaller capitals, Sovereign Military Hospital Order of St. John of Jerusalem and Rhodes and of Malta. And if I would tell you that Freemasonry is celebrating the 24th of June as the day of the Feast of the Holy St. John for Freemasonry. Ah. Mm. You see, that's, it's, it's always the same. It's, be it Catholic, be it uh, Freemasonry, it's always the same. But these organizations here, JRS, for example, they are being playing out in this, they are playing uh, their agenda in secret. You don't know and you don't hear about them in the open, in the mainstream, CBS, CNN or what else. You don't, they don't talk about that. This is the refugee service. Yeah. So all the people here, this is a German advertisement. Oh, I would go as far to say as they can't talk about that, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody here claims in a in a highly regarded German newspaper that he's been he become as a refugee from Afghanistan. Yeah. Why? Because the American uh, military has bombarded in Afghanistan, for, and then he went on to become a refugee, and he he got uh, a shelter in Germany, which is against the German law, by the way. Um, and it says now I care for ill people on the Corona station, on the Corona hospital. Yeah, you see that all the things, the refugees and the current situation, yeah, it's all been connected together. You have to realize that that is not 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 something uh, separate from another. So that I would say that the JFK assassination is connected to the moon landing, of course, because JFK promoted that and is connected to 9-11 and is connected to all the other things, because actually the people behind the scene are absolutely the same. So Isn't you cannot something you cannot you cannot judge Kennedy alone as as being the one who did not obey, but you have to see it in a big context. Yeah, and even well, isn't our, that something the way they do this? Because uh, the presidents of the United States, like uh, oh, let's take uh, Donald Trump for example. He <laughs> claimed that he would drain the swamp if he got in office. Well, uh, anyone that actually is a little critical of uh, Donald J. Trump knows that he is the swamp. So how can the swamp drain itself? It can't. Sorry. Fail. The, the other line of these serious conspiracies is what does the Bible tell about conspiracies? And they tell that there are conspiracies, the kings of the world, uh, make counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. Yeah, and so then when Donald Trump is the president of the United States, he is a king. Yeah, he's the king of the United States. And secondly, he is used to be depicted as a billionaire. Yes. So you can only serve God or the mammon on whom he's serving. It's obvious. It's obvious. And you see that it's very obvious that all the things are coming together now that uh, six, seven years after the so-called refugee crisis, then out of a sudden these people are being depicted here in advertisements and colorful advertisements in newspapers as the savior of mankind, then helping out ill people against the uh, attack of this deadly virus. A virus. Oh, Michael, we got to mention something just quick, briefly. Now, dear listener, you have to keep in mind that the attack on the King James Bible has been so successful in the United States that people just don't consider that the, the very source of scripture 
has been corrupted at the root level and they have abandoned the Protestant heritage of the King James Bible. It's gone. It no longer exists. It only exists on us that want to restore it. Otherwise, it's gone. All the institutions have left the old King James scripture. So that is a huge, huge problem. And the problem there is when you go to your Bible and you consult the scripture, you might be very confused as to why we use the King James. And it's really simple. It comes down to this. The King James Bible is the only English Bible that explains itself. So scripture explains itself. You do not need an interpreter. You only need the Holy Spirit. And he comes, you know, as it says in 1 John, he comes like the wind. You don't know when he comes and whether he goes. Only God knows that. We don't have that ability. We got to give the glory back to him because he's the one that set us free. It doesn't belong to us. It comes and goes as it needs to, Michael. And I think you know that as well as I do. And I just want to make sure our listeners get that because I think a lot of uh, the the poor souls out there are stuck in, a, in an institution, a church, that doesn't use the old King James anymore. They've abandoned it. You know, they think it's outdated. Yeah, Jörg, Jörg said uh, that uh, Tom Fress was uh, pointing out that uh, people are too lame to read books anymore. And that's yes, a fact. that is the problem. That is the problem. We need to be. I admit I do. I do rarely use books. I rare. I, I most of the times I use PDFs so that I can uh, search, have search functions. And ah, so but you know how to read, Michael. And yes, and, yes, and you, you know. <laughs> It's a long process for all of us here. You know, none of us can say that it's it's easy. It's the exact opposite. It's and and that's the flesh too. The flesh gets in the way uh, of the spirit, and the spirit has a hard time dealing with the flesh, and the flesh has a hard time dealing with the spirit. They do not um, coincide uh, perfectly. So. It's it's a it's a wrestling match going on here. It's a spiritual war, and it has a very very big consequences. And I think, you know, sadly, uh, the Protestants have really got a, a really hard time ahead for them to to regain and to to uh, get a foothold again. Michael, it's it's mm. very difficult. Yeah, of course, it has not been taught in the schools anymore. So people are not aware of that. They just want to receive good grades from the school education system and uh, for other, all the other things, for spiritual things, they don't care because they don't see themselves as a spiritual being. They see themselves as uh, as a functional as a being. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Functional physical being. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem when when one is looking at the so-called universe you know is that mm -hmm. has to do with catholicism actually it doesn't have to do with god's creation because you know god's creation is uh more or less what we've been turned to and via the uh ah uh, jesuit ratio studiorum learning against learning bible learning against worldly physical learning so the the physical world has kind of taken over the spiritual one so to speak and so has the the corruption of the scripture they're both coinciding with the same goal and that is a jesuitical approach called ratio studiorum mm -hmm. and i know it, it sounds ridiculous probably coming from my mouth but listen there's there's a lot to learn from what the old teaching was i mean these these people back in the 19th century knew that this was coming they knew that dispensationalism was a curse and that it would be taught everywhere and they were writing books warning wow, so about it fine. and uh yeah that's that's where we're at michael
Yeah, and in the meantime, I was looking up for the English phrase, but it's the same in German. Uh, the German Chancellor, the official highest uh, premier in the uh, United States, in, in, the, in Germany, has says for his government, there are no red lines anymore. <laughs> so that means that there is no law which you can rely upon. Yeah? So that they do, they make their own laws and if needed, they will uh, modify them. And so you know, know what in the kind of democracy you are living. So that now I'm switching to the things which are really behind the agendas. Of course, these are the papal bulls, Caritas in Veritate, and Laudato Si. So the common house for everybody. And so you see that we have been uh, uh, all the world. Uh, there are refugees all the world. There are people who are starving and all the things so that uh, they take it from the world uh, wealthy states. And uh, yeah, so that uh, they want to make everything equal and to unite everything. So what do you need a world religion? What do you need a world government for when you already have the United Nations? <laughs> because that is the world government Yeah, since 1945. But people actually doesn't see and doesn't realize it uh, the way that it is. So that means that they are so-called being ruled, so-called by experts. And uh, experts are people here, these uh, terms, I have to make it a little bit more readable. These are persons wise through experience. Yeah, so you can be experienced and then you be an expert. Maybe we are experts on the truth because we are busy reading the Bible and comparing the Bible to the so-called reality out there. Yeah, so we, you can gain wisdom in the world, expect, especially through experience. You cannot gain wisdom in the Bible through experience. So there are other terms, but don't fall for any experts here. Um, because you see that uh, people are not infallible, even if the Pope is addressing himself to be so. So in Romans 1.22 and in Proverbs 1.7, then they say when you are starting to be wise, would you care to read it? Oh, for sure. Romans 1.22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. In Proverbs 1.7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, and this is actually in the incorrect order because the Proverbs is much older, of course, than the chapter of the Romans. And of course, you see when you combine the two, uh, then you see uh, the real reason for the people becoming fools. It is just the lack of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But these fools the, who are not fearing the Lord, yeah, they despise wisdom and instruction, therefore they became fools. Yeah, so the rejection of the Lord actually is um, the reason for people becoming fools. So when they follow men instead of God, instead ah, of God, can I clarify that? It's the rejection of a savior. The yeah, rejection also from, in the reliance on someone outside of you. Namely, the fulfilling of the 70th week of Daniel, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many lessons in the Bible to, to tell us uh, very clearly. Uh, very good, Michael. Yes, professing themselves. They, they want it for themselves. They don't want to share god's glory they want god's glory they they steal god's glory they steal his uh salvation yeah, they block they, the path to salvation yeah because they, they despise pleasure and wisdom. wickedness yeah they despise wisdom and instruction so they reject the commandments and therefore they are fools because they think they can set up new commandments like the georgia guidestones yeah, so this is this is clearly actually if you combine the two, this is clearly what is going on to you see that people would like to become gods. You shall be as gods, like the serpent says in the Garden of Eden. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the people who are being seen in this world as powerful, clever and experts, this is the world class Satanist artist Marina Abramovich together with Mr. Rothschild. Yeah, you see, these are also puppets on a string because there are many, many, many more potent and powerful people behind the scene. Uh, you see sovereign military order of Malta and the Vatican uh, behind all the politicians. And uh, these are all the same institutions who are behind all these artists, singers, uh, sports, uh, 
cups, etc. Yeah, if you believe it or not, but these are people hanging on a string. Yeah, this is not uh, children play or uh, Charles cinema. This is actually the real thing here. Those, these people are being only successful because they are in line with the agendas who are being played out by the papacy or by the Jesuits, which is actually in our modern day and age absolutely the same because the Pope is a Jesuit. So beware of experts because they don't rely on the commandments of God and on the Bible, but be care that they only rely on man's knowledge. And I got one very hilarious uh, example for you because it also resembles a little bit of interesting touch when it comes down to experts on the case of JFK. I got here the example of the astrophysicist Jana Levin, a PhD, who was asked to explain the concept of gravity. No, you're not in the science as the new religion series, but as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we will continue in that. Um, to five different people, a child, a teen, a college student, a grad student, and an expert. Okay, so one who has been wise. <laughs> uh, if you believe in uh, the concept of gravity, I think that you have not read the Bible, but... Uh, yeah, of, of course, the Bible does not depict gravity <laughs> because it does not depict that the Earth is moving around the sun. <laughs> yeah, you would have to read the Bible to understand the dilemma here. Yeah, you see that. Would you care to believe somebody as a PhD from a university who is uh, here being displayed in front of a green screen? <laughs> Man, this is sorcery here. This is witchcraft. Yeah, this is fooling the people. Yeah, because you see that you can project this uh, PhD in every environment you would like and you please create your own science fiction. This is not science, but science fiction. I'm sorry, but you, you can really go into argument with me with on gravity and I will ask you one or two questions which will uh, keep you busy for the rest of your life because you cannot prove the concept. It's just a one theoretical concept once again. Yeah, are gravity waves. Yeah. You see that you need a new theory to prove the old theory. And you, you step from one theory to the next theory. And you, you see that she's an expert, she's a PhD, she's educating others on a professional basis. And now she's uh, been uh, interviewing another expert. And let's look what the outcome is. You see, the only uh, real uh, important thing is that they have to exclude God because otherwise they would not see themselves as being wise anymore. Yeah, so they're just making um, here claims. And now you see that all the experts on JFK and all the ballistic experts uh, came across to, they all are just being totally deceived uh, by believing official statements, by believing witnesses, by believing um, the Warren report and all the things. And uh, I start uh, from scratch, so I don't believe anybody. I just make my own research. So I'm comparing the things and I would hardly recommend you to do the same. Yeah? So don't believe any man. Believe the Bible and then compare everything to the Bible. This is a Bible channel here. Both Brad's and my channel are Bible believing channels here. So that is our reference and nothing else. Yeah. So she would not pretend being any anywhere else, or wouldn't she? <laughs> yeah, you see, this is also this is this is a lie in itself, the picture here. Yeah, this is a green screen, and so she's she's claiming to be in space or something else. You see that they, makes absolutely no sense, but the fool the people. Yeah, so this is science fiction, and this is the same science fiction which has been used by the 9/11 uh, commission or omission report uh, by the um, NIST. Uh, method that the pancake theory this is all science fiction that does not happen it only happens once in 9-11 <laughs> and uh, in the kennedy case also there are so many artifacts which we stumbled upon so these for example the most prominent would be the magic bullet yeah so that happened nowhere else and not before and not after yeah, so it's the same concept as 9-11 it is sorcery it is absolutely deceiving people and i would hardly recommend to start your research from scratch don't forget anything that everybody ever mentioned to you. Start from scratch and ask yourself, is it in line with the states and the quotes of the Bible? So once again, this is just an example, and I did not want to uh, spoil your precious time out there, please, dear listeners. But uh, just I found that very hilarious because you do not you do not know what I know because I have listened to that interview twice. It's 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 an absolutely hilarious example. Okay. So she is then 
explaining her theory of gravity and she and she says and that is what kept me busy in the um, study of the Kennedy assassination she, she said you can leave the earth gravity if you have achieved a speed which is higher than 11 kilometers a second I said what 11 the number of Freemasonry chapter 11 Genesis 11 the Tower of Babel The 11 bricks on the window of the Texas School Book Depository, anybody? 11? Or 11 miles per hour, the alleged speed of the presidential limousine? Or Apollo 11? Or 9-11? Or what else? I know 9-11 is about Apollyon in the Book of Revelation. But you see, Apollo 11 and all the things, it's, it's always the same. It's 11 is the, the number of the Freemasonry identifying themselves as being the Of architects, so to speak, of the Tower of Babel, or a skyscraper in the modern times. And I said, 11 kilometers a second. That is very strange because she is on the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Remember the last session when we have pointed out some other professor there then uh, depicting a pentagram on the uh, in, in, in the schoolroom. Very interesting. And she has a bachelor in astronomy and physics, etc. Yeah, so that is very interesting. That is very interesting. Why is they, are they using kilometers a second and not uh, miles per second? Huh? Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So why is it necessary to travel 11 kilometers per second to escape the Earth's gravity? Well, this is a concept, people. Huh? There is no proof. You cannot prove it. There is nothing which can accelerate you to that speed because 11 kilometers per second is about 11 times uh, 3,600 seconds per hour. That is a speed of about 39,000 kilometers per hour, which is, uh, if I calculate it in my small head, it's about uh 23,000 miles per hour or so yeah you cannot achieve it by, with your car you can't escape the Earth's gravity therefore you see these are all concepts here it's absolutely futile to go into this yeah this is the escape velocity l11 11 once again kilometers per hour and we know that the nasa is being controlled by freemasonry so are you surprised I hope not because there are no There are no, 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 no coincidences. Yeah, so this is, sorry for that, but this is the uh, building of the Tower of Babel. This is first Moses 11, or in English, it is Genesis 11. Yeah. So this is the problem there that people are also not used to uh, in symbolism. And this is a pentagram depicting the five times I will of Lucifer now being called Satan. And so they are using all the same symbology in the United States in the Star Spangled Banner, as well as the European Union, as well as in China. You see all the five pointed stars every time it has the same meaning. Yeah. So let's. Uh, yeah, because uh, Satan wants to be in the height of the clouds and would like to be like the most high. Sorry that I skip it here, Brett. But uh, we are uh, not, uh, yeah, I would like not to uh, go into this ex extremely because it is just an example here of their kind of uh, deception, yeah, uh, deception. In the, in the Blaney version of uh, Isaiah 28, when it is about the first musician being Lucifer, um, they call, uh, yeah, this is Isaiah 28. 28, which has been deliberately been uh, depicted and been uh, talked about in our satanic music agenda sessions. And that is about somebody who was in the Garden of Eden uh, of God. So who was in the Garden of Eden except Adam and Eve and God and uh, some cherubs and a serpent, huh? <laughs> Nothing that I knew of. So that means there must be some spirit here in the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, there was an anointed cherub, which also points to Lucifer. And uh, this one was the musician here. And uh, the, they had, he had tablets and pipes, etc. Um, and also he then was uh, spoiling his position uh, because uh, he sinned. Yeah, he sinned um, because iniquity was found in them. And uh, therefore he was cast to the ground. So it is, of course, uh, Satan here depicted in his function as Lucifer, as uh, the light bearer. And now it gets to the real nitty gritty here in the last verse in the Blaney version, for example, because it is much more easier to read. It is said here in verse 19. Would you like to read it? Sure. All that 
excuse me, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. Yeah, so the real terror is Lucifer dash Satan. And in a satanic system, of course, they are turning everything around. So out of a sudden, uh, people, civilians, are the terrorists. Huh? It's a war on terror. But actually, this war has been pointed out from the terror himself being Satan. Yeah? So they are twisting everything around. And it's not by coincidence that Mr. Bush is using a 666 sign and is bombarding Afghanistan and bombarding Iraq. Yeah, so therefore you know how you can create your refugee crisis. Yeah, so one agenda is uh, serving the next agenda. And these people, of course, are actors. Both of them have died recently. Um, this is Colin Powell, the foreign minister. And this is Mrs. Madeleine Albright, also former foreign minister. And she said it's okay of the death of 500,000 Iraqi children. That was worth for Iraq's non-existing weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, and so some protester asked that, oh, there are 1.5 billion dead in Iraq already uh, in comparison to 5,000 dead in New York who are the terrorists. Yeah, you ask yourself what the war on terror actually is. And everybody that is flashing out the sign here, um, yeah, this is a German professor, highly regarded professor, which has been educated and now has a profession in a Jesuitical university, and he's absolutely making uh, a mess out of physics, but uh, of course you know why, and you know who's funding him. So once again, escape is off velocity. Now I'm getting back to uh, JFK real soon. I promise that. Yeah. So this orbital mechanics has nothing to do with JFK, of course. I just want to say here that there are universal graphical gravitational universal gravitational contents means Catholic gravitational constant. Yeah. You see that is 11.186 kilometers per second. Okay, so let's get get it on to the real interview, because I'm not going into every nitty gritty and detail here. You will be very astonished now to see what kind of experts there are who want to tell us about something about physics or astrophysics or science in general or in politics or ballistics, etc. You see that uh, people are mixing up everything. I have asked myself, for example, where the C for the speed comes from, from this uh, Albert Einstein guy. Yeah. E equals mc square, yeah, because usually velocity or speed has been depicted with v for velocity, yeah. But now uh, there are also other people who are absolutely have an admiration for the Latin language. In Latin language, speed means celeritas, from accelerating, accelerating. Huh? Interesting, interesting. So uh, there are many, many, many people who are really into the Latin system. Uh, just a little hint here: um, it is not only Maxwell and Einstein. This is just uh, not part of the sessions here, but uh, you see I'm busy with so many things because I have to question everything. Please uh, please do the same, please question everything. So going into this uh, interview once again. So escape velocity must be 11 kilometers per second to escape the Earth's gravitational field uh, because this is a theory, because they have to, to support their heliocentric system, of course. Huh? No, okay, she says, if you get it to go that fast, it's not going to come back down again. Yeah, you see some fancy stuff here. This could also be a green screen. Yeah, I remember uh, she was depicted in front of the green screen, so you cannot uh, actually tell if that is a real image or it's just a photoshopped and a green screen image. You cannot tell. Yeah, it has no engines anymore. The engines are turned off. Yeah, so once you have reached a certain atmosphere, a certain height then uh, everything goes on automatic and you don't need any burning fuel. It's just you have to shut on the engines because then um, you are actually in the atmosphere and uh, there is no more power needed. Uh -huh, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, so when you are in the orbit then, yeah, she says the theory is that you don't need any fuel anymore. Hmm, very interesting because uh, that does not go for the Apollo Luna module. But once again, Apollo is a Roman god, Luna is a Roman goddess. <laughs> yeah, and they've been describing here this engine here for starting, for ascending and descending. Yeah, this uh, little tube here, this is the motor of this uh, Luna module. 
and you see this has been highly been uh, fabricated here. It looks like a student work, but actually this has supposed to be landed on the moon. The problem is that you have an engine with a 10,000 uh, foot pound of thrust, yeah, throttable, and uh, nothing happens uh, from that so-called engine because you see the absolutely smooth surface of moon dust, <laughs> if it would be the moon because the stars are missing. On here, you see this is a hilarious picture which actually is, is one of the main proofs that this landing is absolutely BS, never happened, never would happen actually, because it is not, uh, people who would read the Bible would absolutely laugh that away. Yeah, and absolutely let that away. But if you have a big engine here, 10,000 pounds of trust here, that uh, there is no dust here, no cover, no hole, no, no crater, no anything. Yeah, so you know that this is just, they fool you. They fool you. Yeah, with these temperatures uh, on the moon, uh, you see uh, to duct it, uh, to, to use duct tape and to, lose, to use aluminum foil, this is hilarious. This is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so, but that is just uh, my problem with it, that I don't believe anything uh, unless it had been proven to me. And I'm not the one who have, has to prove anything. They have to prove anything. But the problem is, oh, I'm sorry, the pictures are gone and we don't have the technology anymore. Hi, right, Brett? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course, what do we expect from a government organization? Yeah, once again, also the, the cover up of the JFK assassination has been done by the government because the Robin Commission has been officially been installed and uh, by Lyndon B. Johnson, huh? of course. So now we go to our expert. So one expert is uh, talking to the other expert. So this is Matthew Cleburne, and uh, both of them are talking about now gravity. So we've been talking about gravity. Yes. Now it gets really interesting. You can't precisely say where the electron is. Mm -hmm. So these are two experts, remember. Yeah, both of them are really educated here. The chair department of physics, New York University. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can't absolutely say that in quantum mechanics. Ah, now it gets really interesting. And there's an energy in that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There are sacred principles of relativity. Of course, that is a sacred cow, so you don't have to question anything because Albert Einstein is the big saint of the church, huh? because it fits the narrative also of the Big Bang and everything else. So you have to know absolutes anymore. There are no gods. Or there is no God, actually, it's relative. Everybody can have his own. So uh, do what thou wilt. Huh? It's the whole of the law. Yeah? So sacred principles. Once again, sacred principles means uh, this is a holy cow. Yeah? Some, something who is in, which is infallible, not to be questioned. Yeah? And it is possible that the whole of gravity mm -hmm, is some kind of emergent illusion. Oh, wait a second. Isn't she the one who has been uh, said to be a professional and is educating people and uh, children and grad students into uh, being uh, professional physicians? And now they are talking about this is some kind of emergent illusion. Oh, like a green screen. Although <laughs> which although which side is the illusion? Mm -hmm. And which side is the reality? Oh. Interesting. So usual physics against quantum physics. So mm, that is really a hard guess. You see that they are both communicating now on a metaphysical level. They have nothing to do with real science here because they do not know anything. They're just guessing, supposing. Yeah, they are the same. Oh, they're the same. Aha. Which side is the reality and which side is the illusion? Yeah. So they are the same, which means that the reality is the illusion, or the created reality, or virtual reality, or what else, or the reality that they've been teaching on the school is absolutely the same. It is a fantasy concept. And she's not changing the subject and just says, oh, uh, I mean, temperature is still great to talk about. Yep. Yeah. And so maybe there is no such thing as gravity. Uh, but sorry, this is the astrophysics who explains gravity in five levels of difficulty. But now when she's uh, talking about uh, gravity against or with an expert, they conclude that there maybe is no such thing as gravity. So on the one hand, they are teaching the things. And on the other hand, they are submitting that maybe there is no such thing as gravity. Isn't that hilarious? My, my, my. Yeah, isolated from quantum mechanics. Ah, I see. Now it has been uh, related. Now maybe there's also gravity, but there is no such thing as gravity uh, isolated from quantum mechanics. 
So now you not only have to believe in the uh, theory of relativity from Einstein, but you have to believe in quantum mechanics as well. Uh, otherwise, you have a real problem, but you cannot uh, tell the difference between reality and illusion. Look at the look at this video. You, you see that many people have, who are more professed than me, especially more used to use the English language, but I found that hilarious. He says, we've got two sides which are actually secretly the same. Oh, isn't that the same as Freemasonry and the Catholic orders? <laughs> or as the uh, Republicans and the Democrats? Or the Blues and the Reds? It's all the same because it's all a big deception. The media has been controlled since 200 years. And so all this is a big fantasy concept. It's secretly the same, secretly the same. Yeah. On one side, uh, sorry, now I'm getting really confused. Sorry, Mr. PhD. Uh, first, you, you, you said uh, um, they are secretly the same, the sides. And now he said he's telling us on one side, there's definitely no gravity. So I think that is contradiction here. Either they are secretly the same and there are no sides. And now he's talking about on one side, there's definitely no gravity. So when they are secretly the same and on one side, there's definitely no gravity, then on both sides, there is no gravity. But what they are talking about, because this is used to be a scholar video about astrophysics explains gravity. But ex explicitly, they cannot explain it because they cannot grasp it. They don't believe it. It's a quantum theory of gravity, whatever that means. So these are two experts having absolutely no clue, but their own imagination, their own ideas, but nothing which is really true and which is proof. And this is not science. This is religion. You believe in the quantum theory of gravity. It's the same religion as you believe in the magic bullet theory of JFK. This is also not science because it, it cannot be proven and it did not happen before and did not happen afterwards. Yeah, so all is a big religion here. It's illusion. It's like a green screen. Mm -hmm. The fact that there are these fundamental issues that we really don't understand. People outside, all out there, please remember, these are the experts on astrophysics and they don't really understand what it's all about. And they say secretly they're all the same. And on one side, there is definitely no gravity. Wow. And now, maybe I have understood that video incorrectly, but uh, actually it does not make any sense because they submit that they don't know the fundamental concept. Yeah, there's definitely something that's working here. Yeah, but please avoid at any cost, Brad, avoid the name of the Bible or the name of God. Yeah, because otherwise these two were no gods anymore. These were no experts anymore. These were just learning people, but they call themselves experts. They have high grades and they're teaching other people, but they do not know how the, which is the working principle in their illusion of astrophysics. Yeah, what structure is lying under it, we just don't know. Absolutely, don't, they don't know nothing, but they teach their knowledge they don't have to other people and these people they are getting good grades isn't that hilarious i found that video absolutely hilarious please if you would like to to have some uh, interesting time then you can go into this video on youtube i found that last week and i found that so interesting that absolutely when they come on an expert level it's all religion it's all belief they cannot prove anything they don't know what structure is lying it secretly they're all the same and on one side there's definitely no gravity welcome to science is the new religion Yeah, this is science fiction. Yeah, I know that I don't know anything that says Socrates, and I'm not a fan of Socrates, but if you know that you know nothing, you know much more than any other people who just believe in it, but it's not it's just belief and not knowledge. Yeah, so these people are worshiping actually uh, Greek philosophy. These are worshiping actually science and all the things. Yeah, the temple of Apollyon in Delphi. Ah, it's all the same. Yeah, Apollon yeah? in Delphi, Apollon. Yes, 11. Huh? Freemason, of course. It's always the same. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, you know, battle is, of course, war. And star is in the book of Revelation is depicted as angels. So a battle angel. Yeah, who could be the battle angel of the galaxy? <laughs> ah, Satan, anybody? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. If you if you know that the commander is uh, is called Adama, 
Yeah, so Adam A, yeah, or Adam Adam, or or what else? So Adam, yeah, Adam is 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 here, so the first man, and um, the the warrior has been called Apollo once again in the Battlestar Galactica. Huh? It's it's always the same. It's it's uh, they from the from the blue uh, league. Yeah, blue of course, uh, blue league of course. It's about religion. Yeah, the son of the commander Adama on the brother of Athena. Oh, Athena is a Greek goddess, huh? And you see, there is also no resemblance from the helmets to, uh, for example, to a pagan Egyptian pharaoh with a snake symbol on top. Huh? Nothing to do with it. No, just a few thousand years apart. Uh, but you see, the concept is actually the same. Yeah, the one eye god is the incomplete god. Be it a Cylon, which resembles a cyclop in the Battlestar Galactica, be it a Knight Rider with a scanner, woo woo. Or be it the one eye symbolism with a reptile eye on the Lord of the Rings, on the Sauron's eye, or be it the one eye symbolism on the backside of the one dollar bill. It's always the same. Bad guys are being depicted with one eye. And I know that Kit is being seen as a good car, a good guy, but actually he's on a mission. <laughs> you remember the German, uh, you remember, sorry, the American title, um, he's been depicted as Knight Rider. So there's something to it, huh? It's always the same. If you go to this, you see that it, it's, uh, the, the Oracle of Delphi, of course, it's a dragon and mythology is a dragon which went down to become uh, the, the name of the con con town has become to the name of a snake or a serpent. You have the serpent in the symbol of the NASA, the snake. Don't be silly. You can trust us. Ah, it's always the same. Coming back to JFK quite soon, quite soon. Yeah. yeah, it's all about symbology. Finally, JFK. JFK made a speech, a so-called Freemason speech, and he says here, be the honorary chairman of a great fraternal organization. So then we go into this. You see that uh, we have talked about the 33, about the 22 plus 11. So the 22nd of November being then the total amount of 33, which is the highest grade on the Scottish right. But usually it's been depicted as the York right being the American right, which is not correct. And also Mr. Peter Gabriel knows that. I'm on my way, I'm making it. And uh, of course, he's depicting here the backside of the American dollar bill. But the problem is that Mr. Peter Gabriel is coming from the Great Britain and not from the United States. Yeah, so maybe he's telling us that he's an initiate. And if he is, then he's an initiate in the Freemason room. Uh, that has something to do with some things he made on the stage, actually wearing orange suits and all the things. Yeah, you can guess yourself that is more uh, suitable to uh, Freemasonry than anything else. So the one eye symbolism once again, yeah, like in Thorazine also. Yeah, when the patient lashes out against them being a threat from somewhere else, then you just uh, keep him uh, busy or keep him calm with Thorazine and that puts an end to his violent outburst. And you see the evil once again has been depicted with a one eye symbolism here. Now it is not a reptile eye, of course. This is also not a reptile eye, but actually it's very interesting. Every time again you see one eye symbolism, it is something evil or threatening. Hmm? Very interesting. And uh, Mr. Peter Gabriel says here <clears throat> on that very uh, point of that video, <laughs> I'm smarter than that. <laughs> yeah, you mm. see that uh, he's, I think that he's an initiate. He's so worldly famous. And now did we come you know, back. Did you know about this, Michael, that in... Um in Turkey, they have something called the evil eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Is that part of, uh, I think that might be uh, part of the uh, Muslim faith, maybe, or yes, something? It's, it's a, it, yes, it's the same as uh, the, um, it, it's an amulet, you see, against the evil eye. Yes, ah. it's very, very often you see that in Islamic uh, businesses, in Islamic stores, and also in, Islamic, in cars. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, cars yeah. also, they, they, they carry that as an amulet. It's like the Christophorus, so the Saint Christophorus, the patron saint of the traveling people here, and, and very, very prominent here, because the Saint Christophorus, also we talked about that in the series about James Dean, um, because the official Porsche um, magazine is called Christophorus, so the Roman Catholic patron saint of the traveling people, yes. And now you can depict that the Porsche has something to do with the Roman Catholicism, huh? 
Ah, by the name alone. Yes, that's the evil eye. Yeah. You find it in almost every Islamic store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A protection against the evil. Yeah, you see the evil has been depicted with one eye. That's the spot on bread. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so we got back to our famous DD Plaza, our Freemason Temple of the Sun of, of Osiris. Okay, now you can think for yourself why they are using these Scottish musicians here, can you? Mm -hmm. It is not that uh, Mr. JFK was a Scottish man. He came from, actually his family came from Ireland, so it has nothing to do with Scotland so far. Uh huh. Okay, and uh, Didi Plaza also is not located in Scotland. And there were no Scottish people involved in that, as far as I know. So why they are using a Scottish band here with the Pipers? <laughs> of course, huh? It happened on the 22nd of uh, November, it means 33. So the 33 is the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. And therefore, I'm not surprised that they are using these uh, musicians there. What, are, what surprises me actually is that the weather conditions were that bad that were these weather conditions actually uh, happening in 1963, then I guess that Mr. John F. Kennedy would not have been driven in an open car. <laughs> yeah, so much for coincidences. No? So the Dallas Scottish Rite Temple, oh, there is this temple also, not only of Didi Plaza, but there is a actual a real recent Den Dallas Scottish Rite Temple, is a structure from 1930. 13, and this is the depiction of that temple. Interesting. And now you got another hint, yeah, because this is a temple in Dallas. Yeah. And you see here on the balcony, you see here the sign of Anu, which is president every Masonic temple, usually. You see the columns. Oh, yeah, not only there, but uh, have you ever checked out the, the altar of the fatherland in uh, Italy, Michael? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, the famous. Uh, what is it like? Uh, oh, what do you call that? Um, not Pantheon, but the big fancy building they had there in Rome, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 2000 years ago. They mm -hmm. had a big altar there, too. Mm -hmm. And it was it's um, kind of similar to the to the uh, Greek uh, Pergamon altar in a mm -hmm. way might be yeah yeah but uh yeah my friend uh, and i were checking that out last night and uh, we were just talking about that and you can see that there's those same eight pointed stars there and they're just everywhere in uh capital cities and such like in uh saint paul minnesota mm. you find them on bridges and all over the place yeah michael yeah yeah well we are you are part you're a civilian of a freemason country yeah, yeah, and that's right. <laughs> and, and and you see that structure here. I got now a female uh, support in my German series called Stephanie, and I'm now uh, training her to look at the details. And uh, she said that, oh yeah, that looks very uh, stylish here. <laughs> and uh, it's the same symbolism as we have depicted in, in earlier sessions about the Didi Plaza. Yeah, so you see what, what it is. Actually, um, these are bricks, yeah. But these are, if you count them, Brad, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times two yeah, is 18, and therefore it is a resemblance of? Six plus six plus six. Yes, it's always the same, you see? Mm -hmm. yeah, you find it in Didi Plaza and you find it in the very own Scottish right. Oh, wait, now, if you count the white ones, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Same thing. Yeah, nine yeah. and nine. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always the same. It's always the same. Yeah, and this is the one who is responsible for that. I have enlarged it. This is Mr. Cochran. <laughs> and now it gets really funny. An honored citizen, a true Freemason, and a Christian gentleman. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Mixing it up, Michael. Yeah, this is contradiction and this is an oxymoron. You cannot be a true Freemason if you are a Christian. Huh? This... Unless uh, you have a Freemasonic society like we do. <laughs> yeah, and, and unless you misjudge uh, uh, Christians as a uh, part of the uh, part of any church nowadays, you see that there is no church uh, known to me. 
And this is my comment on that true Freemason and a Christian gentleman. Ouch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> yeah, the, the deception everywhere, really. Deception everywhere because people really think that the Freemason is some noble thing. Actually, it is a religious thing. Yeah, there are master numbers. Yeah, 11, 22, and 33. These are master numbers in numerology. And I used to train, be trained in numerology as well, 25 years, 30 years ago. So therefore, I knew that all oh, these were the highest numbers, and I did not have any clue on Freemasonry 30 years ago. But it's very interesting that is that you see that 11, 22, and 33 are the so-called master numbers. Jesus said, "Let no man call you uh, call himself master, because one is your master, which is the Christ." And it's very interesting because it is the 22nd of November, which then, of course, uh, resembles to get the total amount of 33. But this is not an explanation why Freemasonry resembles 33 to be the highest grade or to be an honorary grade, especially. Because actually what they are doing, they are, that's the resemblance of the 70 weeks of Daniel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I know this is the wrong, um, this is the wrong uh, time code, but it does not matter. Because what we know for, sure, for certain is that Jesus Christ achieved the age of 33 and a few months. Yeah. So you see, to be the grand master, yeah, of disaster of the Freemasonry, you have to have the same number as the age of Jesus Christ, and that, for me, that is the hint that there has something religious thing going on. Because uh, you see that the priesthood of Jesus Christ started when he became uh, 30 years old, and the highest grades or ranks or levels. Uh, steps or whatever you would call them on Freemasonry is above the 30 degree. Yeah, so it has something to do with the priesthood, and this is a religious order nonetheless. Yeah, so if he was dying or crucified in 33 AD or in 31 AD, that is not relevant at the moment. What relevant is, is that he was the fulfilling of the 70 year prophecy of Daniel, and therefore everybody who knew the Bible including the disciples of Jesus Christ, absolutely must have known that it was his mission, or not, uh, it was his task to be crucified. It was his task to be crucified at the age of 33, because yes. otherwise... You mean 70 weeks. You said 70 years, but just want to clarify, make sure oh, I'm sorry. Yes, our listeners weeks. know you meant yeah. 70 weeks. 70, 70 weeks, yes. Yes. Yeah. And so therefore, you see that uh, if you then compare it to the 30, um, 30 steps of Freemasonry, um, you, you, you got the conclusion that they absolutely want to be like God. Yeah, they want to be like Jesus Christ. Yeah, they want to achieve, they want to be high priests. Yeah, 33. That is my um, expression or my interpretation of the 33 grades of Freemasonry. Yeah, once again, I know that these uh, years are debatable, but that's not the thing. The thing is that we know that the 70 years ended on uh, X 1347 and 46. You see, on the top levels of Freemasonry, oh, it has nothing to do with the temple. No? Therefore, they call themselves knights. They, therefore, they call themselves commander of the temple huh? and the prince of mercy and the prince of the tabernacle. Oh, yes, it has nothing to do with religion. huh? My, 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 the grand pontiff. Yeah, oh, the prince of Jerusalem has nothing to do with uh, religion. huh? And and then the highest grades, the 30 to 33, has been called the Knight Kadosh, the Commander, Inspector, Inquisitor, or oh, Inquisition, has nothing to do with uh, religion. huh? And the Royal Secret Master of the Royal Secret, yes. <laughs> the Sublime Prince. Mm -hmm. And the Sovereign Grand Inspector General. Uh -huh. Sovereign Military Order of Malta, everybody, and uh, yeah, the general, the supreme general of the Jesuits, you see everything is mixed up, everything is mixed up here, everything is mixed up, it's just Freemasonry, it's just deception, but it is a temple, it is a temple, everybody sees that it is a temple, my, 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 it's so obvious, it's so obvious, my, 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 okay. We know that Jesus Christ uh, was at the age of 33 when he was crucified. And we know also that the 70 weeks of Daniel has been fulfilled. The proof is in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, actually, what we have elaborated, I think it was almost four years ago. Would you care to read the two verses, Brad? Sure. And the next Sabbath they came, almost the whole city together, to hear the word of God. But... When the Jews saw the multitude, 
excuse me, multitudes, they were filled with envy and speaking against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Oh, yes. And then uh, continue. Into, yes, the next, next two, please. Uh, 46 and 47. Yes. That reads, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge ye yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to or of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Yeah. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Yeah, and this is also reference here with the Gentiles, reference to Isaiah 49, uh, verse 5. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the pres preserved of Israel. I will also give thee a light unto the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salutation unto the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. So the New Testament refers once again to the Old Testament. It's always the same. It's always the same. Yeah, and so it is very interesting if you go on to that because JFK was more or less the sacrifice king. And therefore we know the root and we know why he was killed on the Elm Street and not on the other streets. And it has something to do with the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah means that it's a pagan uh, system, what also the Jews has uh, been uh, imported from their captivity in Babylon. And uh, this is depicted here, and that's this symbol. And there are several possibilities with planetary symbols here. And this is very interesting because it is very easy. So uh, I use the same principle once again. It's called KISS. So it means keep it simple, stupid. And as I'm a stupid guy, I have to read and I have to look and I have to discover and I have to research. And now it's, it's very interesting because if you compare the outlay on the lower section here, there are... I can tell you there are many, many, many explanations here and you will come across more explanations in the next session. But you see that this is the street of death here. This is the street of the judgment, which we have already seen, Shin, the numeric value in 300. This is the main street and this is the commerce street. And it's very interesting because if you see here the planetary position, this is Earth. Yeah, so this is the underpass. Yeah, this is Earth underpass. To be uh, driven to the underpass means to be driven to the underworld. Yeah, now you have the resemblance why he was killed before the underpass. He reached the underpass, and uh, it is very interesting because if you uh, are very familiar with symbology, and uh, I can tell that I am a learned astrologer, which I did uh, 25 years ago. Uh, and a very famous German uh, astrologer also. And this is the station here uh, with the sun. And the sun, of course, is a symbol of Osiris. So this is the sun here. Yeah. And now you see that you got here on the left side, you got a Texas school book depository. And there is the planetary position of Mercury. This is very interesting because Mercury is a symbol for communication and knowledge. And the messenger of the gods, so the equivalent to the Greek Hermes, which also uh, plays a heavy role in the Freemasonry religion, so to speak. Very interesting because now you know that it's not been stationary there, Texas School Book Depository, uh, randomly because uh, Texas School Book Depository since 1963, so just before the assassination, it was relabeled from a, a grocery store to the Texas School Book Depository. The building actually stayed the same also from the outside, but, and it's a big but, it was renamed being the uh, compartment to contain um, knowledge, yeah? school book depository. And of course, also the killing of Kennedy was uh, been like uh, in a school book. So it, it was an example of a Freemasonry execution, more or less. And so that means that uh, the 
the lower part of this Kabbalah actually is uh, is quite correct here. You see, you got the the uh, sun in the center. Yeah, this is the center here. You got Mercury on the left, which is the Texas School Book Depository, and then you got the Earth or Death or what else because it's going down. Yeah, it's going down. Um, you got the Earth here on that spot, which is a triple underpass. And this is, of course, not a closed the seal compartment here because this is just a pyramid which, uh, with the top stone missing. It's like the same symbology on the one dollar bill backside. And it gets more interesting because it does not fit quite. Yeah, because you see the old courthouse here, which would be an equivalent of uh, uh, Jupiter or Saturn, um, is much, 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 much too much to the center. But what is really interesting is that um, this is the Venus symbol, you know, the goddess of uh, love and fertility. But the Venus in astrology serves two houses or two areas. It's one is the seventh house, which I mentioned before. It's love and it's partnership and uh, all the things. Uh, but it's all, at the same time, it is the second house in astrology, which is about materialism. It's about wealth. It's about money and all the stuff. Yeah. So and this then it's very interesting because now you look at the name of the street. What does it does it tell? It tells Commerce Street. And I think that it's no coincidence that um, if you remember last or second to last session that uh, in this area here on the right spot at the Commerce Street, they were building a huge amount of skyscrapers. Yeah. So the the poor side or the death side is this side because there is nothing else here but the Texas School Book Depository, which is now in the two upper floors, a museum, a temple of the muses. And after that, a railway station. And you can tell that railways or trains are not the transport methods of really rich people. So this is the poor section here, and this is the commerce street where actually the big money is. And so you see that uh, that serves also the um, symbology and the theory that it has been uh, created uh, like the uh, the tree of life uh, on the uh, Jewish uh, Kabbalah uh, or the ancient Kabbalah sacred witch wisdom to enrich your life yes <laughs> yeah so that sun fits mercury fits venus fits earth fits what's that in the middle that is a so-called planet which has been discovered in 1930 and which has lost his planet status quite recently the planet is called pluto and pluto has been seen as the lord or the ruler of the underworld it is the eighth house in astrology used in in in, um, in European, and um, therefore it's the planet of death. Yeah, so that is um, almost between the sun and the earth, or between the Osiris and the triple underpass. And what is here in the middle of Main Street, Brad? Mm. Nothing that you can see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing that you can see. Yeah, and I'm sorry for being this uh, German script here, because mm -hmm. here it is uh, the three lines of the three shots. And this is the position of Zapruder, which actually has been uh, Zapruder ZAP and not B. It's been wrongly attributed here. But nevertheless, you see the, um, the position here of the middle of the Pluto, of the Lord of the Underworld, is about the region of the third and final and fatal shot. And that is exactly the line where Abraham Sapruder was located. Abraham Sapruder, as then, if I am correctly informed, was a 33 degree Freemason. And do you really think that if he worked, he had an office here in the Deltex building, if I remember correctly, um, that he as a high ranking initiated Freemason did not know about the scheme of the Kabbalah of the Didi uh, place, uh, Didi Plaza? So if so, he actually knew that uh, Kennedy has to be killed before they were reaching the second um, part of the Elm Street. And this is absolutely, you see that this is the, the middle between sun and earth, between the Osiris and the triple underpass. So he had to be killed at least here. And that is very, 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 very close to the spot where Kennedy actually was being shot in the head to make sure that he will be dead. Yeah, you see, you can survive a shot in the leg, you can survive a shot in the back, but a shot in the head is a very severe injury. 
And also this is depicted here by these uh, stairs here, which we have counted last time with uh, two times 11 stairs. Yeah. So yeah, at least here, uh, the Pluto, the uh, stage of the planet of death is approaching. So that is absolutely quite near to the end of that pergola. So he had to be killed there. And Abraham Sapruda, I think he exactly knew what was going on. And he was ordered to go to there to achieve his 33 degree of Freemasonry. It's an honorary grade, remember? If you serve a big, big, important function of the society, and he did that with his uh, movie on Zweiter, he deceived uh, millions or even billions of people into believing that there were three shots, into believing that what would happen uh, by random. Uh, and of course, he got a blurry image because it was just an eight millimeter movie with, uh, I can tell you, I, I, I'm absolutely uh, sure that there are no official uh, movies, but all copies have been modified from that movie on a certain purpose. Yeah, and so you see that you can also prove where the point of death must be inside the Elm Street or inside the Didi Plaza temple with the planetary symbols of the Kabbalah. And there is much more to it, but we are running out of time once again. Yeah, you see the Venus, for example, as a planet of wealth and material and as you would like to say so mammon is quite easy because the ruler of the second house is the Venus and uh, the Venus, the second house is called Taurus. And Charles is the bull, and therefore the bull in the second house of the first first uh, three houses is for material uh, things. The second house is for uh, for the soul. The third one is uh, the partnership, and the fourth one is uh, society. And so the second house is the physical possession. It's German. I'm sorry here, but the physical possession means the second house, the second uh, zodiac sign, um, is of course Taurus, and Taurus is the animal which is depicted as the stock exchange when it is going up. Of course, this is astronomy. This is quite easy by astrology, actually. This is astrology symbology, quite easy. So you see that uh, when the bull has been depicted in the stock exchange, it means, oh yeah, this Venus in the second house is rising and it's very prominent, it's very powerful. So you gain riches, yeah? So you serve mammon. We have all the symbology hidden here in the Didi Plaza. If you know what you are doing, then you just uh, draw the circles and you look where the stairs are, you count the things, you count the numbers, and then you come step by step by Say, step by step. Hmm. I, I have a question quick here, Michael. Looking at the structure of the Kabbalah Tree of Life here on the left, there is a kind of curve from Mercury to Pluto to Earth. Mm -hmm. Could it be that you could you could use that, utilize that and say that from from that curve there on Elm Street, as you take a left from the depository building to the underpass, that could be represented as a straight line. And then as you follow the curve, that could possibly be represented also as passing by uh, Pluto, which is death. Yeah, it, it serves another purposes actually, because you can, according to that scheme, you can also uh, you can also see what is going on and why it is going on. Yeah, so that is very interesting. I'm not related to this because you see the problem is in the Kabbalah. This is secret knowledge, which means you can be deceived. Yes, yeah? you cannot say there are some Kabbalah trees of life who are then carrying here not the Pluto but the Moon. And you see, you can switch everything around. You will never get the truth because that is a satanic concept. Yeah, so Satan is the father of lies. What you can say is that in all system schematics, there is a second position of a planet between the sun, which is depicted by Osiris, and the earth, which is depicted by the triple anapest. So here must be another station yeah, in that line, in that area here. Yeah, and that was the station where the third shot was being uh, fired or the final shot, so to speak, because I'm not convinced there were three shots, but it has several reasons. But uh, your theory about why it has been curved and it's not straight is very valid, but it is absolutely the content of the next upcoming session, because that is not only the Kabbalah tree of life oracle. It serves another purpose. And if I would 
if you would see that next time, you will say that, oh, no, that's not possible. That is not possible. But it is possible. There's nothing happening by accident. Nothing. It is well, nothing certainly happening this by- is not the average, uh, um, what can we say, analysis of uh, the entire event of the assassination of, Ab- uh, yeah, I almost said Abraham Lincoln, of uh of uh john f kennedy michael it's yeah. um I, I i don't know it just it's it it it's in, incredible how this is coming together but you know obviously there's some kind of design there yes yes and it goes much much further you see that i'm just in the beginning of the kennedy sessions we are now in session 29 if i remember correctly and i would estimate that we need at least 70 sessions 70 sessions for that because now everything is coming into play and i can tell you that i am studying occult things for more than 25 years now and i've studied the bible for more than 25 or 30 years now and now everything comes into play what i have learned what i have discovered and what what i see in these things this is of course not the usual jfk study because we are running here biblical channels and you see that my only purpose is according mark um 1615 that we go out uh, and uh, spread the gospel to every creature and uh, to do that i can also uh, do it the other way around to expose all the evil out there that it is no coincidence that it happened there and that was also a freemason ritual which we haven't got into this why it happened that way but it is very interesting but because if you would if that would fitting that would mean that the only solution is that the shots cannot be coming from the texas school book depository because it is depicted with mercury but mercury is just a communication which means that the texas school book depository could mean could function as a communication building there that it serves the same purpose as the wt7 building in the 911 attacks haha and you see, depending on the position you are standing on the triple underpass or behind it, then the pyramid of this uh, famous uh, fountain place yeah, stands on top of the Texas Scuba Depository, all on the top, top of the Dell Tex building. So when the pyramid would be completed, if that would be a pyramid at all, then the Texas Scuba Depository would be the temple. Otherwise, it would be the Dell Tex building. And the Dell Tex building has been depicted with Mars. And Mars is the Roman god of war. So if anybody had to conclude if there was any shot any shot from behind it had to come according to that tree of life from the dell tax building and not from the texas school book depository i can go deeper into this but i need another session to this i cannot do it in 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 five sessions the entire jfk thing because it you see that has been planned and staged for um, decades, even decades. I'm now in the, at the kind of research that I can tell you that it has been staged, not at the Didi Plaza especially, but uh, he was under surveillance for more than 10 years, more than 15 years even. And I will prove that and I will give you the conclusions and then you you, you have no indisputable facts because everything has been uh, substantial uh, evidence has been uh, rid- getting rid of. But if you conclude all the things being a Freemason place in a Freemason country in a Freemason temple, and then you conclude the things and then you come to the, yeah, to the necessary clues. Um, and you can exclude so many things that there is not not much left. There are no possibilities left. And uh, when we get down to this, you will be really astonished what the conclusion would be, because these conclusions are not part of any usual JFK documentary. Not that the people are too lame or too unintelligent to do the things that I'm doing, but they won't they will avoid it at any cost because that would risk their profession and even risk their life but it's my purpose to go into this otherwise i do not know why i have studied the things and astrology and all the things uh, almost 30 years ago yeah so that must be a sense that god has uh, ordered me to do so and uh, put me got me out of the uh, of the things and got me back on the track on the bible and i did it always defend jesus christ even if i was together with the people who are then being uh, uh anister crowley uh students yeah but that's a problem you see that i know both sides and uh, if 
I can think of what they have done in that ritual, um, because if I know the ritual, if I look behind it and I look at the symbology, then I can exclude so many things that there are not much possibilities left and that I want to share with you so that you really see that nothing happens on purpose but your country, as well as all the other countries are not only run by the United Nations, but they are run on occultism. They are running by Satan. They are running by Satanists. If you call the Satanists now the, the Knight uh, Templars or if you call the Satanists then the Freemasons, I don't care because it's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same. Your country is being run by occultists. Your country is not being run by any members of any parliament or any members of, of any election or what else. No, this has been run. You see, this uh, JFK had been easily could be killed at, at any possibility with a poison soup or so. But they decided to do it out in the open in broad daylight. Yeah, so that everybody could see that, yeah, we are capable of, we are in, still in charge. We have the power to even kill the so-called, the important or most powerful man in the world. Yeah, because he was already, when he crossed the uh, court buildings, he was without any protection. And we will go into so many details of Sapruda movies. And so I got so interesting artifacts and I got so interesting comments of people who are busy for decades into this film that I want to share that with you, that you once and for all see that the amount of impossibilities and uh, of uh, so-called uh, coincidences is mathematically not possible. It is not possible that it happened on that street, on that charge, and that temple, on that time, etc., etc., from that position. It is not possible. It has all been staged. You can easily uh, guess that if you would like to kill the, um, or execute the American president because it was an execution, yeah, uh, you have to plan everything in advance. You have to plan not only the attack, but you have also to plan the cover up. And this would also be at least four sessions about the cover up, how they did it and why they did it and why they had to do that. And that is even a more, 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 more delicate matter, the cover up of the JFK assassination as the assassination itself. Because they are doing it now for almost 60 years, very successfully. It is more complicated to hide the things than to do the things. Yeah, that's only just a matter of of of, of 26 seconds here, or 28 or 30 seconds. Yeah, you see the the the, the movie is is heavily altered from Sapruda. It's a Freemason movie. What do we expect? The truth? <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. He received then the 33 degree honorary because he did a good service to the Freemasonry that the Sapruda film now has been seen as the evidence of the JFK assassination. Everybody is looking at the Sapruda film. Nobody is using his uh, his brain. Nobody is using his own conclusion. And that's what also been so, so many artifacts in the JFK assassination and that uh, JFK uh, body is missing his brain, for example. Why do you remove a brain from somebody? This is all symbology, nothing to do with uh, just, a, just a killing or so. If you really want to go into this, you have to you have to know what they are doing. It's the same that if, if you know that these uh, pagan churches all they serve the sun god, yeah, and you see then the Osiris uh, obelisk in the Didi Plaza, then you know exactly that it was a sacrifice. It has nothing to do with a random. A uh, lone nut or so. Yeah, Pluto is the is or Hades is the god of the underworld. Yeah, and so it 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 goes on and on. And yes, there is a very 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 important reason why it has that curve. Also, please remember that, uh, for example, in that documentary, of course, he does not tell you the truth, but he does point out some interesting things of uh, Crossfire by Jim Mars. He points out in the picture that there were on the left side of the of the road there were markings on the curve in yellow. Yellow, ah, interesting. Yellow, usually the uh, uh, color of sun. Actually, it is orange, but uh, usually many people think that yellow is the color. So, but they had the yellow color, so um, that they were marking the spot where the shot must be fired or we, where the limousine had to slow down. So, you see so many coincidences there that there is no coincidence, but it has been planned, staged beforehand. Yeah. Once again, here is the obelisk hidden behind it. There's a triple underpass. Yeah, and there Kennedy was killed. It's, it's it's really simple. It's absolutely simple. Yeah, and here you see Mr. Abraham Sapruda on that pedestal. That is where that pergola is ending, and there you see the the uh, eleven stairs by two. 
Yeah, and you see that this is a this is the Secret Service car. Uh, nobody is looking behind. Yeah, because shots allegedly have been fired. Allegedly, sorry, <laughs> nobody is looking behind. Ah, you see, there are so many easy things, but uh, yes, it's uh, Mr. Abraham Sapruda here. He had the order to picture it with his movie camera. Yeah. He also got it in color here. You see him. Yeah. And you see the American president in the last seconds. He stopped waving when he passed the Stemmons freeway sign. Yeah, so that was the uh, moment, moment where he was uh, moving his arms through the throat. Yeah. Hey, Michael, am I seeing things? Is there two people on that pe pedestal? Yes. There is. Oh, yes. OK. All right. I'm not seeing things. All right. No, 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 no. It's absolutely correct. Yeah, this was his I think it was a secretary or so supporting him. And uh, oh, there are so many things into into this. Yes. No, no, no. You're absolutely spot on. The problem is that we don't have any sharp images from that. This is the best one I can come up with. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. So that is the that that's so far where I have gone into. Yeah, you see that is the last picture I've shown on the uh, German session. Once again, if you are a shooter and if you are a really good shooter, you don't choose and usually it, you don't choose a target um, uh, from a position elevated uh, because you see that uh, the Mm, the the bullet trace uh, will not be will be a little bit more difficult. There could could be wind in higher altitudes on the sixth floor, well, on the sixth level there, and then you have to shoot uh, for some shots uh, between the tree. <laughs> oh yeah, and you have to shoot at a target which is moving away from you. Yeah, so that makes absolutely no sense. It would have made more sense if you have shot the president on Houston Street when he's coming to you. So you have the closest distance possible. Once again, nobody with a brain uh, would choose that location uh, because it's hard to get away from that location when because you have to uh, calculate, of course, that there will be a riot, a mess when the people realize that the American president has been shot. Yeah, so how do you get away from the sixth floor? Yeah, you have to pass people. So you see that it's obvious that he was been using as a scapegoat. And I highly doubt that he was even in that uh, sixth floor at the time. It would not make any 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 sense. But uh, that's for later sessions. I know there are so many things that people come up who are uh, allegedly allegedly re JFK researchers, but there are many researchers out there who are as good as explaining the JFK ritual as a JFK assassination as some astrophysics explaining that there is only gravity on one side, but secrecy, they are all the same. Hmm? And not making fun anything out of it, but we have to cut through the matrix. There was once a very interesting uh, clip that uh, Jörg uh, mentioned on his channel. It's called "Cutting Through the Matrix with Alan Watt," and uh, we are being inside a matrix. Yeah, we are inside a Freemason country, and of course, everything has been hit uh, for the public eye. Yeah. So there, when the president passed the Elm Street, he was. Uh, he was at least been shot, and uh, so that is uh, that is the problem. Is that we only got grainy images? Uh, I would like to see much more out of it, but I can't because you see that it's 1963. It is 1963 once again. So that is the end of this session. It is once again a little step more into the puzzle of JFK, but I hope that I can provide enough pieces of the puzzle that you get a bright, colorful picture then, and then you can go on to your own conclusions, what it's all about. Use your own conclusions. Use the brain which your Lord God has given to you. Yeah. This is a Freemason country. This is a Freemason a murder, killing, a slaying, an execution, and it has nothing to do with truth. Yeah, so the cover up is it's another thing, but uh, we are not into the ritual even with just all the pointing out uh, many, many, many other facts, uh, which uh, I think that uh, most probably you never have heard. So thank you very much for having me once again and looking forward to the next time because the next episodes, uh, I think they will get even more or more and more and more intense now uh, because they'll be going deeper and deeper and deeper into the things and then you will realize that uh, what that the official story is absolutely bullshit. Yeah.
Uh, it's absolutely bullshit. It's just for the exoteric people uh, that they've been fed with some lame excuse, ex, uh, excuses. And uh, it, it, it is so easy, actually, if you know all the Freemason stuff and what they did, then it is really easy that you see what the officials have uh, yeah, have gotten away. They have uh, collected all the evidence. Yeah, they have collected all the evidence and destroyed evidence or have hid the evidence so that it is absolutely impossible to recreate that assassination um, 100%. It is not possible because the evidence simply isn't there. But what is possible is to point out that your government and uh, everything else, your officials are being run by a secret organization behind. And if you think that these are the Freemasons, then please uh, look again at the start of this episode. It is not the Freemason. Freemasonry has been controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. Thank you very much for having me, Maranatha, handing it over to my beloved brother, Brett. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm going to just close by reading the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Catch you next time. Oh, yeah, Michael's going to grab it here. I'll read it again. As fast as I can. <laughs> yes. John eight thirty two, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we'll catch up with you next time on the Conspiracy Series with Michael in Germany. Maranatha. <laughs>